Hello, hello, and welcome. It's John Mark W. again um, with the Word, with the Bible, okay? Uh, so there's been many lures and many entertainment, many shows, movies, um, all kinds of different lore out there that it's fun to talk about. It's entertaining. Heck, I even like some of that stuff out there. Uh, I could name a few, um, but I don't want to put attention to those things. You guys can pretty much fill in the blank of what I'm talking about. But there is one written document that st has stood the test of time and that is so much greater than all those awesome lores and all those fantasies and, and things that we like to read about, play, watch, think about, whatever. And that is the Bible. Because it's, unlike those things, it's actually real. There is a biblical timeline to things. There is what really happened and in what society this worldly system inspired by the devil is telling us. They're feeding us bull corn. But what the Bible says is true. When Jesus came to earth in the New Testament, we're going to read, we're going to read that he acted outside. Even though he um, lowered himself and humbled himself to be inside the worldly system, because he had to die for our sins. That's why he came down. He didn't just come down to hang out and get married and have kids and, I don't know, do the normal human thing, normal man thing. You know, he, he was on a mission, okay? So when he came down, he was outside. He worked, you know, with the supernatural because he was linked with God. And that was outside a lot of the religious people that were there those days, the Pharisees and Sadducees. It was outside of what the church during that time was doing because it did not have the Holy Ghost, didn't have the Holy Spirit in there. Jesus didn't give it to them because, well, they didn't follow him. So how's he going to give it to them? You know, he gives it to those who are hungry and who thirst for righteousness. If they think they got it all together already, then why would he give it to them? So that's why he wouldn't give it to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Kingdoms and rulers such as Pontius Pilate, he stood before him and told him about truth. Pilate asked him, what is truth? And Pilate didn't even know truth was standing right in front of him, you know. So those are things we're going to be getting into later. We're going to continue off where we left off last time in Genesis number two. Okay. Um, you guys ever heard of those material safety data sheets? MSDS. I think that's what they used to call it. I think they just call it MS, uh, uh, SMS now or uh, MSS or I don't know, something like that or M. MSD, MSD. They they got rid of one of the the uh, the acronyms for it, and they just basically they simplified it. Basically, that's that's what they did. But um, basically, there's a big big letters above those big manuals or above those manuscripts, those written documents that companies and jobs have in black and white, and it says everybody has a right to know, right or right to know. Or all has a right to know. Something like that. You guys ever seen that? If you guys have seen that, I just want you guys to comment on below if you've seen that. And there's different MSDS sheets bet between where you're working. You know, you have some in the military. I used to be in the military, and I remember we had an MSDS uh, on the ship about how to maintain equipment. How to uh, do it. I mean, we're talking line per line item. It's idiot proof. You can't mess up on this. Anyone can do this. You know what I mean? Because they want to make sure that procedures are being followed and everything is going to work good. Well, Jesus, okay, followed what God wanted him to do till the very end. Jesus could have done his own thing. Oh, he could have. But he didn't want to. He wanted to do what God wanted because he knows that's what's going to save the day. Or at least save us from our sin. Anyways, the Bible is like that as well. The Bible is like the most, the original MSDS sheet. Everyone has a right to know. Every people group has a right to know. So what the devil has done nowadays is he has went on ahead and convinced a portion of mankind that Jesus is a waste of time, that God is a waste of time. They don't know what they're talking about. That's foolishness in there. It's not true. It's not real. It's a fairy tale. 
and I would dare say if this is a fairy tale, then how come most people, right, like fairy tales more than this? And probably because <laughs> this is true. Anyways, that's my little introduction. I know it was kind of a long introduction. You guys know how I am by now. If you don't, uh, you will. Just keep listening to my stuff. But I do respect your time, and I thank you so much for listening to the channel. Like and subscribe if this stuff helps you and all that, those wonderful things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get into Genesis 2. And with reading this, like I said in my other uh, um, uh, videos, we're going to read it from beginning to end, and then I'm going to break it down further after that. So once you see me and I say it's the end of me reading it from beginning to end, then you guys, I leave that up to you whether or not you want to stay and listen uh, to the more broken down version or if you guys just want to go ahead to some of my other videos on here. And thank you for those who are supporting me in my music videos. I do music also, uh, the video games that I like to play, the songs that really strike it and that really just hit it right in the feels sounds awesome and I'm very thankful to the Lord for allowing the people who make that music exist to even make it and I'm glad it passed my ears and I'm just so excited that I hear it and so I make music on this channel too I don't also just talk about the Bible but the Bible is very important and the music that comes from me from my spirit from my being uh, you know the Lord I, I would pray and hope that you know, the Lord, you know, gives me a cleansing power with it, a power that lifts the weight off your shoulders, that makes your day a little bit brighter, that um, makes you feel a little bit better, even heals you by the power of God. God can do anything, you know. Even Christians, we got to stop putting him in a box, saying he can only do this over here, or he can only do that over there. Man, God, YouTube ain't going to, you know, Jesus is not confined to YouTube. He's com he is everywhere, you know what I mean? And so, let's stop putting God in a box. And I do thank you guys for uh, liking my music. For those who have thumbs up or at least give it a listen, <laughs> thank you for doing that. And I will be making some more music too. So, but now, what everybody want to do, hear the word. So we're going to get right into that now, okay? So Genesis 2, this is the New Living Translation, by the way. I chose this translation so, you know, it kind of sounds plain to everybody and everybody can understand it. It's not, uh, you know, some fancy stuff that people may not understand. So let's get to it. <clears throat> so Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 1. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation. So he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was a day when he rested from all of his work of creation. This is the account of creation of the heavens and the earth. The man and woman in Eden. When the Lord God made earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, <clears throat> and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of knowledge, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing it into four branches. The first branch is called uh, the Pishon, flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Aromatic, resin, and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch, called uh, the Gihon, flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch, called the Tigris, flowed east of the land of Asher. And fourth branch is called the Euphrates. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden. 
except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. He gave names of the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused man to fall into a deep sleep while the man slept. The Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone from my bone and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman, because she was taken from man. This explains why a a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. All right, that's the end of Genesis, the second chapter. Now I'm going to move forward and reading it again while breaking it down what's going on to you. And so without further ado, we're going to jump and get into that now. Ready? Go. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. That means God was done with it. He did everything he needed to do to make it complete. On the seventh day... God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all of his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day that he rested from all of his the, his work of creation. Okay, so when it says God rested here, folks, okay, it's not like how, you know, the pagans, right, view in their polytheistic um, ideologies and, you know, the, 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 the mythology of the multi-god type of universe type deal, which you'll hear in Greek mythology and Egyptian mythology and uh, Roman mythology and all those things. It's not like how they would rest, okay? It's not like how human beings would rest. God ain't going to take a cat nap. He ain't going to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? God never sleeps or slumbers. There's a verse that says that, and we're going to get into that later. Of course, this is Genesis. We're just focusing on now, but... It doesn't mean God went to sleep. He took a nap. He dozed off. He, uh, you know, sat in the back of his recliner and relaxed. Okay? When it says God rested here, it means that he stopped. He stopped creating things that having to do with the creation. Because it was done already. It was complete. He didn't need to add anything to it. So he rested, meaning he stopped, okay? I just want to let you know, because, you know, in a lot of these fantasy games, movies, animes, novels, whatever you want to say, the God characters are considered weak and stupid or aloof, or they're taking a nap, they're asleep, they need to eat eat something, they want to eat all this food, you know, or something like that. that that's not how the God, the King of Kings, the Ancient of Days is at all. Nothing takes him by surprise. He don't need to sleep. There's a saying, there ain't no rest for the wicked. Well, there ain't no rest for God either, technically, because he's always up. If, if he were to cease to exist, which is totally not going to happen, dude, the world and we as we know it would just stop. Okay? It's the opposite of what Lovecraft believes about uh, Azatoth or whatever in his writings, where he believed that if that guy were to wake up from his sleep, human beings and everything would cease to exist or something like that. Well, with God, it's the total opposite. If God decided to to stop thinking about us for a moment, oh my goodness, no telling what would happen. You know what I mean? But he's always thinking about us. He's always focused on us. And God is just awesome. Awesome. In that way. So now, let's continue on. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. Alright, so that was heavens and the earth. So then we move over to the man and woman in Eden. Okay, so when the Lord had made, this is uh, Genesis uh, 4, by the way, Uh, Genesis chapter (laughs) 2. You guys should be in chapter 2. I mean, you should know that already. And then uh, verse 4. 
When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. So this means that when God made all these things, he made them, but they weren't growing. Okay? They weren't getting, you know, better. They weren't uh, producing anything. Nothing was really happening. I mean, the world was young and it was beautiful and it was teeming with life, but... As far as the grains goes, you know, neither wild plants nor grains were even growing on the earth. So there's still some minor work, right, that needed to be done. Okay? And uh, it said, for the Lord God had not yet sent rain water to the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. So automatically we see that the Lord didn't send rain yet. So obviously there needed to be rain and God knew this he was going to send it but he understood that hey I'm not going to do all the work to toil all these plants I mean I could I mean to make you know and and fix all these plants and cultivate them but that's going to be work for the man to do and you know what that's right I'm going to create a man to do this work and so man mankind human beings we're like the icing on the cake you know what I'm saying God saved the best for last And then, actually, the icing on top of the icing on the cake, or the cherry on top, (laughs) would be the woman. Because he created woman from the man. It's just an awesome thing. It's so cool. Now, let's let's continue on and read here. Neither wild plants nor grains were growing in the earth, for the Lord had not yet sent the rainwater. Okay, we already read that. uh, Verse 6. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. So check this out. Water was coming from the natural springs that was coming from the earth. And believe me, man, these springs, now you would be, it would be crazy. Not impossible, but very hard to find the natural springs. There are natural springs still on the earth in places. There's probably a lot more than one would think, but it's just, back then, oh my goodness, there was probably so many, because the world was just so young, and man, so you technically didn't even need rain. I mean, the springs could come up from the ground, you know what I'm saying? Um... So then, then the Lord God had formed man from the dust of the ground, he breathed the breath of life into us, so... That's why, you know, from dust to dust to ashes to ashes, that saying comes, because it's all, that's where we came from. Okay, and that's that's what it is. I don't care how you want to say it. I don't care how you want to, you know, you know, people have been saying, you know, we come from other things. No, 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 dude. We came from the ground. God created us from the ground and he breathed the breath of life in us. That's why we can talk. That's why we got the life in us. We can dance. We can sing. We got that energy. We can create. We can cultivate we can customize we can make more life from us you know provided we have another human being to help us do that you understand what i'm saying we can you know get better and better at what we do we can speak forth this word this truth and let other people know about it and like it or not this word this truth will affect you in somehow you will accept it or you will totally reject it. There is no middle ground. I've heard some people say, well, what if I like Jesus, but I just don't want to do anything he says? What if I like God, I just don't want to do what the Bible says? It's like, well, then you really don't love God then because that's what the demons do. They know about God, but they're not going to do anything he says. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's crazy when you get deep into it. You know, you got to be for it or you got to be against it. The Lord has made it to where it is that way. Some people say, oh, you're living in a world where it's just black and white. There's no shade of gray or anywhere. But technically, whoever's living in a black and white world, you know, and we're not talking about racism here, anything about skin color. We're talking about morality here, right and wrong. Right is there's only there's no substitute for right doing. You either do it right or you don't. You either do it right or you don't. And you can call don't many things. You can call don't wrong. You can call don't. Um, you can call it, but whatever it is, you can't call it right. Okay, because right is right, 
There is no substitute for right doing. You have to just do right, okay? And so, and when it comes to morality, it's either right or it's either wrong, okay? And so, God created man from the dust and he breathed, breathed that breath of life in him. That is a living soul. That's a living spirit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what separates us from the animals. People want to know. Well, well, humans think they're better than animals? Well, technically, yes, we are. Because an animal can't talk to you. An animal can't preach the word of God to you. Believe me, if there was no humans left on the face of the earth, God could use animals to, to preach the word if he wanted to. And later on, we'll read in the Bible, he, used, he, sp he spoke through a donkey. You know what I'm saying? But this is how man was created. Okay? And then uh, verse 8. Then God, then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he placed a man... He had made the Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. So there is some fruit that the American culture does not allow inside of America. It's banned from America. I've looked at these fruits before. You can see them on YouTube. You can actually look them up and see them on YouTube. You can see fruits that were banned in America. Now, I believe all these fruits were present during the pre-sin era. But once sin came into the world, it ruined a lot of things for us humans. It ruined a lot of things for us humans. One of the things that it ruined, it caused some plants to be poisonous. It caused some plants... To freaking, you know, be eat, eat. You know, you got your fly trap plants and you got all these plants that are poisonous and not good. And I believe one of the reasons why the plants turn poisonous and why some of these fruits are banned out of the U.S. is because they are poisonous and not very good to your health because of sin. And, but before the sin came in the world, dude, every fruit that could be eaten could be eaten. Every vegetable, seed, nut that could be eaten could be eaten. Everything that was there was all ready and fresh to just be picked and eaten. It didn't have to go through a process of salting. It didn't have to go through a process of, uh, you know, it didn't have to go through any man processes. It was already ready and made for us. And it was just totally a different world. The fruits were of a higher nutritional value and higher quality because the world was young. The soil was rich with nutrients. I mean, just a totally different world when we talk about the fruits and, and the garden and the things that grew there. You know what I mean? And God, and the Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from there. The trees that were beautiful and produced fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed a tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Do you know what this means? This is the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He placed these in the middle of the garden. Now, <laughs> a lot of people, they lose their crap over this. They will say things like, oh my goodness, if God is such a loving God, how dare he put those trees in there if he knew Adam and Eve was going to eat from it and ruin their lives and, and make the earth suffer. And now we have what we have now. I mean, how dare, how dare God, God put those there even in the first place? Okay, so you guys know about the tithe, offering, and pledge, right? If you don't, you're going to know. We're going to talk about that later on. But this was actually the earliest form of the tithe. The tithe is simply God getting the first bit, the first 10% of your income. And I've talked about this before. Say if you make $2,000 a month, well, the Lord gets 200 automatic, right off the top. Not the, not the sloppy leftovers. He gets the top, okay? You pay this to the Lord and he will bless the other 90% of your money to stretch even past 100%. This is a supernatural multiplier that happens. This is a variable of faith, variable. This is an awesome paradigm shift that not a lot of people talk about. Some pastors nowadays and some people are afraid to mention this because they don't want to have to challenge anybody to give. But I tell you, if you give 
to the Lord. Give to your local church. You will see wonderful things happen in the church and in your life as well. And God encourages to give. Like we said, the gospel is free, but to spread this gospel to the known world costs. It takes logistics. It takes money. It takes time. It takes people. You're moving them around to a place that's remote sometimes. And and people don't even know, you know, a lot of stuff that, you know, you're talking third world, you know, in different places in the world. So, you know, God wants to speak to everybody, not just people in first world countries. Because, you know, it's sad, but sad to say, but pretty soon, and my pastor has said this, soon we're going to have to take people out of these third world countries to go evangelize those in the first world countries because the first world countries are tossing God's stuff like tissue paper, except in, you know, atheism and agnosticism and, 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 and all kinds of weird bull crap. Doctrines of demons, the Bible calls it. All kinds of things, rather than accepting the Lord God. Because that's what, you know, it's, it's so puzzling. America once had missionaries come out of America to third world countries to speak to them. Now, ask missionaries all over the world. My pastor is heavily into it. And I'm a part of a fellowship that people go out and they plant churches. We have some of these people coming from third world countries to America to evangelize Americans. Because Americans have gotten so pagan, they've gotten so far away from our Judeo-Christian roots, it's sickening. It's sad. Reinhard Bunke, he was a was an evangelist. You can check him out. He went to Africa. So many Africans got saved. The dude is German. He's from Germany. And uh, he was involved with a blood-washed Africa, meaning the Lord's blood cleansed them, and I mean the Holy Spirit fell on them unlike anything anyone has ever seen in this lifetime. Now, he has strong, great sinners in Africa, and his work is done there. He was very old, and he recently retired. He passed his, um, uh, his work on to Kalinda, I believe his last name is. Something Kalinda, if I'm saying it right. And he has a sermon called The World's Most Dangerous Men. You guys might want to check that out if you're interested. Very awesome stuff. And um, Reinhard Bunke... I know for a, for a moment in the past couple of years he's been trying to do some things in America, but you know he's pushed that over to the person who's taking the mantle over from him and who's going to take the work, and uh, it's it's an awesome thing, it's a powerful thing, and um, it's great. It is a wonderful thing, and yes, we're talking about the knowledge of good and evil. That's right. All right. I let's continue with that, and. Um, so yeah, the tithe and offering and pledge, that's what it's about. That's what we're talking about. This was the earliest form of the tithe, God keeping these things to himself. He has it out in the open because he does not want to hide anything from them. He wants to be totally honest with them and totally open with Adam. So he puts these things in the open. You know what I'm saying? Because he's God and he can. He don't need to hide from nobody. All right? So that's why God put it there. He could have put it anywhere, but he chose to put it there. All right. So a river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden, and and, uh, then dividing into four branches. The first branch is called uh, Phison, uh, flowed through the entire land of uh, Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure, and aromatic resin and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch, called the Gihon, flowed... um, around the entire land of Cush. Okay, just a little note here about Cush. Cush was Africa's old name, okay? There's a lot of names that have been renamed. I don't know who caused the name changes of these lands, but these lands were originally called something else. God already had names for them, unless Adam named them. I think God named the land. Adam just named the animals. Um, I know Adam named the animals and plants. Think about how smart we had to be back then to be able to have the energy to name all the animals and all the plants. My God, it's incredible. Um, the old, the pre-flood, the the pre-sin world was amazing. The pre, the post-sin world, pre-flood world is where things got crazy. 
<laughs> that's where all that life and everything and all that wonderful stuff that was in the pre-sin era it turned into something that was just oh it was terrible it was terrible to the point God even says later okay 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 I'm jumping ahead I'm jumping ahead you guys forgive me let's continue on with this okay so Kush is Africa's old name so this is why science partly gets it correct when they say hey you know uh and they, technically, they didn't really find anything out spectacular. The Bible already says this, you know. You can look at the, on the Bible maps, and it'll tell you what lands was what, where, the, where all these rivers were, the, all the names I said. You can look this up on your own time. I don't want to get into too much detail because, well, quite frankly, my videos is already long enough as it is. I was shooting for 20 minutes on this one, but let's see if I can do it. Um, the third branch is called Tigrish flowed east of the land of Ashur, and the fourth branch is called Euphrates. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it, but the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. All right, so we all know the story. Uh, they're going to eat it. <laughs> okay, we'll just leave it at that for now. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God for, from the, formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky, and he brought them to the man to see who he would, who he would call them, that the man chose a name for each one. He gave the names of the livestock and all the birds of the sky and all the wild animals, but still there was no helper just right for him. So you know how they say the dog is man's best friend? <laughs> That's actually not true. Because if it was true, God would have said, Oh, look, Adam, this will be your helpmate. <laughs> well, see, the dog can help a man out, but not in a ways a woman can. So uh, we just need to get that out the way now. Anybody who loves a pet more than a human being, I kind of question. Uh, okay, well, anyways. I know, I know, humans can be cruel to us, and sometimes we go in to say, oh, at least my, this, this animal is a lot better than, than this person, right? Or something like that. I can understand why humans would say that. But, as we see in the Bible, the dog, man's best friend, that, that's a thing that's made popular in America, maybe even in Europe too, who knows where it originated. That's not what the Bible says here. So, uh, verse 21. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. <coughs> then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. Okay, so we see here. <clears throat> Excuse me, throat's getting a little dry there. Okay, so we see here, God is the physician. Okay, he is the physician physician okay he is not a practicing physician he is not a physician who is going to college he is not a physician who you have to pay he is the physician you see how he just seamlessly made adam go into a deep sleep so he wouldn't feel the pain without anesthesia <laughs> you know what i'm saying without morphine okay he made Adam go into a deep, deep sleep to where he wouldn't wake up, and God constructed from him an awesome, awesome helpmate just for him. Let's continue on. Then the Lord made God, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. And the man was like, at last. You know what that translates out to? Wow, look at this woman. She is perfect for me in every way. In every way. So you can imagine what Adam's thinking. So, wow, she's beautiful. Got the nice attitude. Got the nice... She wants to help me. She's eager to help. She's got the beautiful looks. She's got the curves. She's got everything. You, you just paint a picture, whatever you're thinking about, okay? It was that and more, all right? So man goes, at last, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man, which is me. You know what I'm saying? And so that, that's just awesome. You know what I mean? It's wonderful. 
So verse 24, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Okay, guys. Okay, fellas. Okay, fellas. Okay, fellas. This man talk right now. I know there's probably ladies listening, so whatever. You got, you ladies can listen. But I'm talking to the men right now. Do you see this here, what it says? This explains why man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This means man... You know, you got to get away from your mom and dad in order for you to really, really find a good woman. In order for you to find the woman that you need to find. Uh, There's a saying, you know, a wise man once said, if you want to cleave, you got to leave. You know, you have to leave your parents in order to cleave to the woman. You know what I mean? But nowadays, you know, these guys are still living with their mom or you know, something like that. Or they're still living with, you know, I mean, you got to become, you got to get into manhood. You got to know how to take care of yourself, live on your own, or at least get a roommate. That's another guy who is um, also doing his own thing and who, you know, you guys are can trust each other or something like that. Don't, uh, you know, this is, this is. You know, there's many lessons all throughout the Bible, and this is a very important one. And I'm glad I didn't really have a problem with this in my American culture and my American upbringing. When we're 18, a lot of us, many of us want to get out of the freaking house. We want to get out of our parents' house. Matter of fact, we probably have argued with our parents at one time saying, oh man, I can't wait to get out of here. And then the parents would say, yep, yeah, okay, go ahead. And well, once you're 18, you can. But until then, you sit your behind right here. I know my dad had to tell me that a few times. My mom had to tell me that a few times. Now me, I didn't leave my house directly at 18, but I left about at 19, around there, to join the military. And um, yeah, I had my 20th birthday when it was toward the end of boot camp. Oh my goodness, I'll never forget that. Navy boot camp, I had my birthday inside there. It was awesome how that turned out. I ended up being reunited with my division. I had some problems swimming. Oh my God, Lord knows I, I, I don't like that swimming. I try to stay away from that. But, uh, you know, you had to learn, right? You had to learn because you know, I'm joining the Navy. And just in case I fall off the ship, I have to survive. It took me a while, but I got it. I learned the basics and what I need to learn. But to this day, swimming isn't one of my uh, good activities. Anyway, I'm sorry for that, folks. We're getting sidetracked I'm talking about myself. Let's get back to the word here. Um, now, now the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So they're both naked and they are not ashamed. This is before the sin came into the world. They're naked and they're not ashamed. They see each other because they are where they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing and the knowledge of good and evil is not yet there. It hasn't polluted their minds to where they're like, oh my God, we don't have any clothes on. We need to cover ourselves. They don't feel that they have to cover themselves. They know they don't have to cover themselves. Why would they have to cover themselves? What are they trying to hide? You know what I mean? So once the knowledge of good and evil came in their heart, it totally freaking changed how they're feeling right now. Innocent, and just doing what they were created to do, not having that knowledge of good and evil. You know? And so, that is that, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes Genesis number two. So I've read it, and I'll also have the recap, or the an, an, uh, the analyzing, oh, that's what I was just saying, the analyzation of this chapter, all in one video. And... Uh, That is that. Thank you very much. May God richly smile upon you. May heaven look down upon you and uh, bless your way. If you guys want to get the Lord in your heart, you say, John Mark, I didn't know about anything you're saying, or I did know, but I never seen it that way. It really struck a chord with me. It really touched me deep in my core, and I feel that there's something in me that I need to do. There's something that I need. I need God to come. I need the Lord to come down into my heart and save me from my own sin. 
from my own doubt, from my own stuff that I'm doing that I know is not right, but I like it and I do it. It's a sinful lifestyle. Or you may have problems in other areas. You know, you know what it is. Maybe you've had people tell you about it, but you don't think that it's a problem. But you realize, oh shoot, it is a problem. Some, some of what you talked about is, you know, I deal with something like that. Hey, God is speaking to you. You need to pray this prayer right now. You just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. And I'm asking that you come inside of my heart. Let your precious blood wash away all of my sin. Make me whole and make me clean. In the name of Jesus, by your precious blood I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. This concludes Genesis uh, 2, um, chapter 2, and the analyzation of it. Thank you guys. Tune in next time. Like, subscribe if this has helped you. Tune in next time. We're going to be going to Genesis 3. And we're going to do the same thing that we did for this one for that one. I'm going to read it and then analyze it. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Lord bless you. The Lord richly bless you.